I opened the letterbox and looked inside to find a single envelope waiting. It was a regular brown envelope with my name written in ball pen. Altsky Fumina. The sender didn't write their name, but this was the letter I was waiting for. I rushed back to the elevator to return to the apartment on the third floor. I'm home! Mika emerged from the warm light enveloping the living room to greet me. Mika was my cousin. We were close in years, so we often hung out from a young age. She had already found work and was now living alone in an apartment. I was staying with her while my parents were briefly stationed overseas for work. Welcome back. You must be tired. Dinner's ready. Yeah, I'm starving. Yeah, I'm starving. I hadn't eaten anything since a sandwich at lunchtime, so my stomach was grumbling. We sat down at the table right away, and as we ate dinner, we chatted about what happened that day and other trivial matters. Bang, bang, bang. A low, loud sound repeated over and over, hurting my ears. The window glass vibrated. And it wasn't just my ears. My entire body could feel the vibrations in the air. Mika covered her ears and frowned. Here it goes again. We had been plagued by this heavy bass sound for the last few days. A few days earlier, the person who moved in next door started playing their radio terrifyingly loud at night. Of course, we went over to complain about it. But the person wouldn't come out to see us. God, it's every single day. I'm going to go give him a piece of my mind. Wait. Wait. I followed after Mika as she shot up like an arrow and hesitantly followed her outside. Mika grumbled out into the hall and then banged on the neighbor's door. But still, the person inside wouldn't answer. We stood there for a moment like that, and then... Bang, bang. The stereo suddenly stopped in the same manner it had started. Maybe they're making fun of us because we're women. Mika berated the neighbour, annoyed. After that, the stereo showed no signs that it would roar back to life, so we returned to the apartment, relieved. I went back to my room and took the envelope from earlier out of my bag and opened it right away. Oltsuki Fumina-sama, I have received your letter. I'm terribly sorry. I fear the person troubling you is my friend who has taken up residence in my apartment. I am busy with work. Every day I travel between home and work. Therefore, I was unaware of what is happening there. I'll talk to my friend about what's going on. But he is my only friend. I don't want to destroy what we have. I think we'll be able to sort this out. Please give me a little time. Kubo Toshiro. I had been absorbed in the letter, but then I looked up in surprise. Again? I smiled bitterly and opened the curtain to see a cat on the veranda looking at me through the glass of the sliding door. It had to be someone's pet, but it came to our apartment every day for food. That was fine, but the other day it got inside and started going berserk, breaking one of Mika's beloved flower vases. After that, she always got angry if I tried to feed it. But it was cute, so I gave it some food. 
I brought some of the leftovers from the fridge and put them out. The cat showed no signs of appreciation, but devoured the food on the plate. After watching the cat for a while, I turned to my desk, pulled the letter out again, and then grabbed a pen. Criticize him for his indecisiveness. Kubo Toshiro-sama, thank you for your reply. I understand how you feel very well. I have somebody like that as well. But that is exactly why we are still being bothered by that stereo, and there has been no change. This is an apartment building, so you should consider that a little further and say something to your friend. I don't care if it takes some time, but can you work up the courage to do so? Otsuki Fumina After that, Toshiro and I started exchanging letters. It turned out the person staying in his apartment was someone he owed a lot to, and so he didn't really want to tell him off about his behaviour. After I sent him words of encouragement, it seemed he had finally made up his mind to do something. I'll say something to him about the stereo tonight. I've thought about it a lot since then, and I've finally worked up the courage. If he really is my close friend, then something such as this shouldn't destroy our relationship. I think he'll hear me out. After all, I've never turned him down yet. So please, wait just a little longer. Kubo Toshiro I felt happy that peace would return once more. But then, that loud noise started up again. Then, it stopped just as quickly. Silence returned. I smiled before I could stop myself. I got into bed that night relaxed for the first time in a long time. I don't know how long I slept for, but when I suddenly woke up, I was surrounded by darkness. The cat was crying on the veranda. I was slightly annoyed it woke me from my relaxing sleep, but I also couldn't be bothered to get out of bed to chase it away, so I closed my eyes again and started to drift back to sleep. A scream? A scream? I sat up in surprise and then froze. A figure stood on the veranda, looking into my room, bathed in moonlight. It clearly wasn't a cat. The shadow didn't move, but simply stared at me. Who is it? Who on earth was it? I was so scared that I couldn't move. I don't know how much time passed. But just as it appeared, the shadow suddenly disappeared. Like I had broken free from a spell, I dove under the covers. Daylight filtered through the gap in the curtain. At some point, I had fallen asleep. Having just woken up, my thoughts were still a mess, so I got up out of bed and threw the curtains covering the glass door open. I screamed when I saw what was on the other side of the glass door. It was hanging from the clothesline on the veranda, bathed in the morning sunlight. Perhaps it was from the wind or its own weight, but the hairy thing swayed in the air. The side of that poor cat 
that until just recently had been running around so energetically on the veranda, was seared into my eyes. What's wrong? Mika heard my screams and came running into my room before long. But the moment she saw the scene on the veranda, she froze and her breath caught in her throat. The cat, its visage indescribable, just stared with cloudy eyes wide open at the empty sky. We collapsed in the living room in shock. Mika fell silent and didn't say a word. Normally I would make breakfast around this time, but I couldn't unsee the side of that poor cat, so I most certainly didn't feel like eating. Even after sitting at the table, we remained silent for a while. Mika stared at the roof while I at the table, and both of us were lost in thought. Who on earth had done such a thing? Did that figure I saw the night before do it? Come to think of it, I hadn't mentioned that to Mika yet. Um, Mika-chan? I told her about the figure I saw on the veranda the night before. She listened to my story quietly with her arms folded, and then suddenly spoke up once I was done. It's someone's cruel idea of a prank. A prank? Yeah. It has to be the guy next door. She hit the table in anger. Just who the hell is that guy? He was the one in the wrong to begin with. She was so upset that I felt a little daunted. At any rate, we should be careful from now on. Yeah, you're right. You too. You get home late after all. I realised it was well past the time I had to go to school, so I hurried towards the station. I thought about Toshiro as I ran. Maybe he wasn't able to convince his friend. And that was why he did something so cruel. Either way, I'd write him another letter once I got home, I thought, as I got on the train. When I got home that day, the sun had already set. I checked the mailbox, which had become a habit by that point, and inside found a familiar brown envelope. As I rode the elevator, I felt somewhat nervous. Was there something terrible waiting for me again? The heavy steel door opened. Before me stood the usual scenery I was used to seeing. I laughed at my own anxiety. I walked down the cold hall, the fluorescent lights lighting the way, and opened the door to our apartment. I'm home! The only thing waiting for me there was darkness. Neither the usual warm light nor Mika came to greet me. Maybe she was out but it wasn't like her to not leave me a message first. I pressed the button on the answering machine, but as I thought, there was nothing there. I turned the TV on to try and get rid of the loneliness I felt. The sounds of the host and viewer's laughter filled the empty room. I watched the screen for a while, but... There was no sign of Mika's return, so I felt more and more alone. Maybe I should take a shower. I went to the bathroom. I turned the shower on and at first it was lukewarm, but then it gradually got hotter and I stepped under it, letting the water wash over me. My feelings settled as I showered. Mika. Where on earth was she? And what was she doing? Suddenly, I heard something ring, the sound mixing in with that of the falling water. Was it the phone in the living room? Leave the bathroom. 
I hastily wrapped myself in a bath towel and rushed out of the shower. I trotted over to the living room as fast as I could, and the moment I picked up the receiver, the phone fell silent. Maybe it was Mika. What bad timing. In the silence, it started ringing again. Hello? The only thing that came out of the receiver was silence. I stood there for a moment, but the person on the other end didn't say a thing. Worried and nervous, I hung up the phone. Not even ten seconds had passed when it started ringing again. Maybe it was another silent call, but maybe it was also Mika. It might be Mika, so answer it. I hesitated for a moment, but in the end, I nervously picked up the receiver. Hello? But still the person on the other end remained silent and didn't say a thing. Silence enveloped me. I put the receiver back down with a trembling hand. The phone started ringing again. Just quit it already! Unable to bear it any longer, I violently picked the receiver up and screamed into it. Just quit it already! H Humina? Mika's surprised voice answered. What's wrong? Why are you yelling? Mika-chan? Where? Where are you? I was so relieved that I started crying before I could stop myself. Ah, sorry. Everything's been a mess. I'm at the hospital. There was an accident. I'm coming home now, but I'll be a bit late. I'll tell you everything once I get back. So just wait a little longer, okay? Bye. I suddenly felt a chill, and my entire body trembled. I realized I was standing there in a single bath towel, so I returned to the warm water of the shower again. When I got out of the shower, Mika still wasn't back. The apartment felt so big. I suddenly remembered the dead cat. A shrill sound echoed in the room, and I jumped. Seem died fallen asleep while waiting for Mika to return. The doorbell rang again. Who could it be? Mika had a key, so... I slowly moved over to the door, unconsciously stifling the sound of my own footsteps. Suddenly the door opened, surprising me. But the chain lock was on, so the door only opened a little. Then a hand appeared in the gap and tried to take the chain off. I peered out through the gap. Mika-chan? Mika was standing on the other side of the door with a surprised look on her face. She seemed to get even angrier once she saw me and put her hands on her hips. How rude! I can't exactly get in if you leave the chain on. S sorry I quickly took it off and Mika stepped inside. A bandage was wrapped around her right leg. It seemed to hurt or was injured because her face grimaced a little with each step. I was glad I was no longer alone, but on the other hand, I was worried about Mika too. Are you okay? What happened? A car hit me soon after I got on my bike. My brakes didn't work. I'm lucky the car suddenly slammed on the brakes, or... You didn't notice anything wrong with your brakes before now? They were fine until yesterday. And then, when I checked, the wire was cut. I was speechless at what could have happened. Luckily, the car stopped in time, but if it had just been one second too late... Hey, Humina, what happened here? As I fell silent, 
This time Mika asked me a question. I told her about the silent phone calls. My bike and these calls. These aren't just pranks anymore. Who could it be? Do you think it's... Of course it's that guy next door. Mika spat the words out. The guy next door. Oh yeah, the letter. I suddenly remembered the letter from Toshiro. I took it out of my bag. Mika looked at me with a strange look on her face. Fumina, what is... Hang on, I'll tell you everything later. I held Mika back with my hand and then finished taking the letter out. Otsuki Fumina-sama, I must apologize to you. I tried my best to get my friend to stop playing the stereo so loud, but he wouldn't listen to me. On the contrary, now that he knows it upsets you, he wishes to retaliate even further. I am no longer able to stop my friend. To be quite honest, he is also acquainted with some violent gangs. At this rate, you will be in danger. Please leave right away. Kubo Toshiro. Hey, Fumina, what is that? Mika asked me, her voice annoyed as I looked over the letter. I told her everything that had happened up until that point, and then handed her the letter. She silently looked over it, and when she was done, exploded. This is no laughing matter. What a thing to say. He's the one who moved in after us. I've had enough of this. I can't stand it anymore. This is a crime, plain and simple. Let's talk to the landlord. Or maybe we should even take it to the police. Hey, hang on. We don't have proof that they did anything. Plus, it's Toshiro-san's friend that's doing all of this. I don't want to get him involved, too. Humina, you're too much of a pushover. That's his problem, not ours. I tried desperately to calm Mika down, but she wouldn't listen to me. So, come on. Let me send just one more letter. Then I can properly convey my thoughts to him. And if that doesn't work, then... We're calling the police. She did so reluctantly, but Mika nodded her head. After that, I returned to my room and immediately sat down at my desk. Kubo Toshiro-sama I have gratefully received your words of advice. However, what your friend is doing to us is a crime, and there is no other way to put it. We will not be run off by such violence. If matters continue, then we will take action. If you can't do anything, then we will talk to your friend ourselves. Therefore, please talk to your friend one more time. Otsuki Humina The next morning, Mika accompanied me to the front door as always to see me off, despite her injuries. Her right leg seemed to hurt a lot, so she was taking the day off work. I didn't want to leave her at home alone after receiving that letter, but Mika wouldn't let me skip school for that alone. Are you sure you'll be okay by yourself? I'm fine, don't worry. I'll carefully lock the door behind you. Do be careful, okay? All right, I'll be back later. But even though I left for school, I couldn't stop worrying. As soon as club activities were done that evening, I rushed back home. I found myself running home from the station without even realising it. There was no reply to my letter. But when I opened the letterbox, there was a single piece of paper inside it, like a report. Looking at it suspiciously, I picked it up and read it. If Fumina-san happens to read this, please run away right now. 
My friend intends to retaliate for real this time. You, at the very least, should run away while you can. Alert the police. I ran to the nearest public phone, violently grabbed the receiver, and then dialed 110. It started ringing. It was the first time I'd ever called the police. Before long, a heavy voice responded. Yes, this is 110. Ah, uh, um... Nervous and panicked, I faltered as I tried to explain the situation. When I was done talking, the police said they would send a patrol car over right away, and then hung up. I was suddenly overcome with exhaustion. It took a lot longer than I thought to explain the complex situation. I started back for the apartment right away. I pushed down hard on the doorbell. Mika should have been inside, and yet... I pressed it again. There was no response from inside. I remembered that letter again. Was Mika okay? I readied myself, turned the doorknob, and discovered the door wasn't locked. Why? A chill ran down my spine. My hand on the doorknob went stiff and started trembling. Inside was wrapped in darkness. I groped around for the light switch and then turned it on. No light came down from the roof. I squinted. Some light poured in from the window and my eyes gradually adjusted to the darkness. I looked at the dark dining room and then my breath caught in my throat. The room was a mess, like a typhoon had tore through it. Blood and pieces of broken cup were all over the floor. Worried, I made my way towards Mika's room. I tripped over something on the way and fell to the floor. There was no way we'd leave something so big on the floor there. It couldn't be. Hurry to the end of the hall. Taking care, I carefully made my way down to the end of the hall. As I did, I heard a faint groaning coming from the end room. I knew that voice. Mika-chan! There was nothing I could do here by myself. I should call someone for help. Having made up my mind, I turned back and rushed towards the front door. As I was about to pass through the living room, something grabbed my leg and I tripped. I looked down and someone was lying on the floor. They were tightly gripping my ankle. Looking closer, it wasn't Mika. It was a man I'd never seen before. Terrified, I tried desperately to shake him off, and then the man gripping me slowly looked up. His face was covered in blood and his eyes cloudy and unfocused. Kya! I screamed. As if on cue, the door to the back room slammed open, and then another man came running out. The man seemed to roar when he saw me helplessly lying on the ground, and then he approached me. I told you to run! Why doesn't anybody listen to me? Run? So then, this man was... The man lifted the knife in his right hand. The other man still held onto my ankle, so I couldn't run. As I saw the faint reflection of the knife surface in the light, I closed my eyes in resignation, and then the man, gripping my ankle, suddenly sprung up like a spring. Toshiro! You sure got me this time, huh? The man screamed, his voice hoarse, and then he leapt for the man holding the knife. As the two men fought, I sped out of the room like lightning. I had to call someone for help. Someone! Anyone! Help me! I screamed as I ran down the hall. 
The hole usually only took a few seconds to traverse, but today it seemed especially long. When I arrived at the elevator, I turned around. There was nothing but a strange silence under the cold fluorescent lights. The men in our apartment showed no signs of leaving. As I looked at the apartment, the elevator doors opened behind me and two police officers appeared. I clung to them. What's wrong? Normally the sight of their uniforms overwhelmed me, but now they were a sight for sore eyes. In a panic, I tried to explain what was going on. The officers looked at each other. I grabbed one of their hands and dragged the officer towards the apartment. When I opened the door, a man lay beneath it, covered in blood. The officer's expression tightened when he saw the sight before him. Then, suddenly, another man jumped out of hiding. Caught off guard, the officers were unable to respond. The man took off down the hall with unbelievable speed. One of the officers quickly went after him. I entered the apartment. Where was Mika? I opened the door to her room, and then screamed. I'm home! When I got home from school and opened the door, I was greeted by darkness. It had been several weeks since Mika passed, and recently I'd almost gotten used to living alone. I didn't especially feel lonely anymore. I despised how heartless I seemed. Bang, bang, bang. The sound of a stereo once again echoed from somewhere nearby.